Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids, and in today's video, I want to discuss with you the important parts and the highlights from yesterday's Apple Worldwide Developers Conference keynote announcements. Now, normally when these announcements start, we get a short video and then Tim Cook comes on stage and tells us some updated figures, performance, how retail was doing, etc. It was very different. In fact, the intro video was extremely long, but very funny. And the whole of the Apple team seemed very upbeat and energetic, so that was really good to see. And instead of Tim Cook giving us these updated performance figures, he actually announced, I'm not going to do an update for you, we're going to go straight into what's important. And they started by announcing the new version of Mac OS X. Now this is available to developers now, it's coming out to the public later on in the year. And they gave it a name, as they always do, and this one's called El Capitan. Now, I personally don't like the name. That's just uh, personal to me. I, I, it's not catchy, and I don't like it. But they've obviously got their reasons for choosing that name. Now, what they are actually focusing on is experience. So the user experience is going to be improved. And also performance, which is really good to hear. And then they updated lots of apps, so lots of small updates, lots of rewrites of apps. But the things that really caught my attention were the new window controls. So you can very easily have this sort of half window or split view. Uh, very easy, put windows into new spaces. Very good update here. Uh, also a new notes application where you can drag sort of feature rich content into the notes application and have it sort of create something that's very usable. Now, there were other applications that were updated as well, including Mail, of course. Uh, Mail, very similar to the Notes updates, where it's a lot more feature-rich. And what it really means for Apple, or what I've got out of this, is that rather than them trying to pack lots and lots of new features into the operating system, they've decided not to do this sort of catch-up game or try to get ahead of the competition. They're just looking at refining it and really honing in on the important features of a desktop operating system. So that was really nice to see. Then they moved on to talk about iOS 9. Now again, iOS 9 is available to developers now. There's also going to be a public beta as well on this, and it's actually out later this year, so full release later this year. Now there were lots of things in iOS 9. I'm just going to go through the sort of main things that I found interesting. A new Siri user interface. Uh, Siri is also being improved as well, so it's a lot more sort of artificially intelligent. Uh, search, when you go into search, it also includes people suggestions. As a side note, uh, Apple are also launching Apple Pay in the UK in July. That's fantastic news. So at long last, we'll be able to actually pay for things with our iOS devices or the Apple Watch, of course. Um, 250,000 locations, so bigger amount of locations than when they launched in the US with this, and London transport, so public transport in London you'll be able to pay with Apple Pay. Anyway, back to iOS, a new news app, which looked good, it's a nice way of uh, sort of uh, showing us the news, but mm, do we really need Apple to be in control? of what news we see. You know, that worries me a little bit. We've also got new keyboard gestures, plus a trackpad where the keyboard resides on an iPad. You can actually use two fingers and control where your cursor is on the application you're typing into. That's really nice. Multitasking and a new task switcher, picture in picture video. So if you're watching a video, you can shrink this down, overlay it onto something like mail, and continue watching your video while you compose a new email. We've also got, and this is iPad Air 2 only, this particular feature is multitasking where we've got split view, two applications running at the same time. Also promised is better battery life on the, I think they were talking about the iPad Air 2, plus three hours of battery life when you upgrade to iOS 9. HomeKit enhancements. Now this isn't just to do with iOS, but lots of new devices added to the HomeKit uh, sort of um, uh, system. Plus, you can control HomeKit devices anywhere via iCloud and it's completely secure. So that sounds really good. 
Now I wished before WWDC, I did a little video saying what I wished for, and I wanted sort of new, uh, sort of, well, I wanted a new iPad, a new iPad Pro, but I certainly wanted new productivity enhancements on the iPad. And it seems like Apple are gonna deliver this with iOS 9. So what this means for Apple? Well, it's really obvious that Apple have been watching the competition and then they're gonna be refining iOS to deliver what's been available already on the likes of Google Android, but they're gonna be delivering it in a more fluid way with a better user experience. Now, Apple do this a lot. They watch other technologies and then they give us their spin on it and they normally get it right. So I'm very interested to, to actually see if iOS 9 delivers on its promises. Now, you all know how I personally feel about the Apple Watch. I didn't keep my Apple Watch, but this is still very exciting. Watch OS 2, available later this year, already available to developers. Native apps on your wrist. This is very, very big indeed. So instead of the app residing on your iPhone and the Apple Watch just pulling the information across, the actual app will be installed and live on the watch itself. So this should mean a much better performance and also much more control for developers. So really very big news that. New watch faces, yeah, they look cool, but I can take them or leave them. Uh, devs can now make their own complications on watch faces and you can reply to emails straight from the watch. Now, what this actually means for Apple and the Apple Watch is it's going to be faster, lots of cool features, and most importantly of all, Apple delivered us the message that they're really serious about the Apple Watch. Now, we almost got to the end of the keynote. Tim Cook came on stage and delivered a one more thing, which is what Steve Jobs always used to do, he used to really save the best bit till last. Was this the best bit? Well, I'll let you decide in the comments section about that, but they announced... Apple Music, which launches at the end of June on Android later this year. Uh, what it is, is it brings together music, video, and lots of different material all into one application. We've still got iTunes for purchasing music on the iTunes store, but with Apple Music, we get streaming of your music, including pulling in all your favorite tracks and suggestions. A 24 seven worldwide radio station called Beats One, and Connect, now Connect allows artists to share more, things like remixes, demos, videos, etc. And this all sounds just sort of okay when you first hear about it, but actually it could be very big. If done right, then this could well revolutionize the music industry again, it really could. Now at launch, there's a three months free trial, which is good. And then after that, you're going to pay $9.99, which is about £6.99 per month. Or there's also a family plan, which is for up to six members, which is going to be $14.99 a month, around about £9.99. Now, Apple Music is not of great interest to me, but I think to people who are really into their music, and especially for artists, it gives them a great new way of connecting with their fan base and with their audiences. So there were lots of really good announcements from Apple. No new hardware, it was all concentrating on the software, which is, after all, what the Worldwide Developers Conference is all about. So we've got lots to look forward to. A new desktop software with OS X El Capitan. We've got a new iOS 9 and new Watch OS 2 coming. So really great announcements. And I think it's really solidifying the whole sort of Apple ecosystem and bringing together what promises to be a really amazing user experience. So let me know what you think about the announcements in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.